You've all probably experienced stress before and notice how it makes you feel a particular way. This is your body's physiological response to stress. The initial physiological response that people typically experience in response to stress is often called the fight or flight response. It's this feeling of being energised. This energising feeling is your body's autonomic nervous system preparing you to do one of two things. If you can run away, that's the flight path. That's probably the safest way to deal with a bear or other large predator running towards you. However, if you're sort of trapped or backed into a corner, the alternative is to fight. So what your body does is it gets your pulse rate going to circulate blood more quickly around your body. Your blood pressure goes up, breathing increases and digestion is reduced so that blood can be diverted to the muscles. The idea is that this is what's supposed to give you the best chance to survive threat from something like a predator. The problem is in our day-to-day -day lives now, it's very unlikely that we're threatened by large predators like bears and crocodiles. Seriously, even in Australia, the land of deadly fauna, we don't have that many issues with crocodiles or even sharks and snakes. Most of the things that stress us are things like our jobs, maybe exams or relationships, all those sorts of things. Those little day-to-day -day hassles that are not really functionally dealt with by the fight or flight response. If your boss comes over and says to you that you need to complete this report by tomorrow, it's not that functional to punch your boss in the face just like it's not functional to run out of an exam that is stressing you out. Those actions are not going to deal with the stressor, they're just going to make it worse. Nowadays, because a lot of the stresses tend to be ongoing, many people end up in a lengthy state of chronic stress, which can result in some severe consequences. In the 1950s, Hans Selye developed the General Adaptation Syndrome, or GAS, as a model for an organism's response to stress. From his research, Salier discovered that the organism's reaction to stress was non-specific and found that the body showed the same sort of response regardless of what the stressor was. From his findings, he proposed three predictable stages that an organism's body goes through when responding to stressors. The initial stage is the alarm response, which is similar to the fight or flight feeling where the individual experiences the initial physiological reaction. In response to the stressor, the stress response system causes the release of cortisol and adrenaline, the two stress-related hormones that help the organism to cope with the immediate stress. The second stage is the resistance stage. This is where the individual releases large amounts of these stress hormones over a long period, and the body attempts to resist or cope with the stressor. This could be an individual dealing with a difficult relationship, financial problems, or difficulties at work or school. The consequence of this is that the individual's blood pressure or their heart rate, their muscle tension are pretty well constantly elevated and their immune system is virtually constantly suppressed. Now, the individual may be able to effectively deal with the stressor, which then minimises its impact on them and their body returns to more normal levels of arousal. Even though the individual is able to cope with these negative changes to their body for some time, eventually they'll no longer be able to cope with these changes. It's likely then that they'll enter the stage of exhaustion, which is the last stage. This can result in a range of negative consequences, including disease and collapse, as the organs of the body become impaired from trying to cope with the stressor over a long period of time.